All right. It's Monday, and it is really crazy out there. It's worse. Things have just happened in the last hour or so that we're going to talk about uh, in this first. We'll probably talk about it for a couple of our hours tonight. It has to do with a company called Solar Winds, plural, Solar Winds. And what is solar winds, and why are we concerned about it? This is uh, this is just fascinating. Let me find a story to start with here. There are a lot of headlines. First of all, uh, that uh, traitor AG, they call him Barr, is gone. He wanted to leave sometime after the holidays. Trump apparently, allegedly, called him into his office today and said, "I want you gone." before the holidays, so Barr was allowed to resign. I wish Trump had physically grabbed him and had him hauled out of the White House and ejected. That's what he deserves. He doesn't deserve to be allowed to resign. Just my two cents. Chinese communists, as you know, if you've been listening to this program for any length of time, have infiltrated top companies and governments in the U.S., the U.K., Australia, and many other places around the world. It's communism. How long have we been talking about that here? It's communism. That's what this is all about. And the election was about communism. You either vote for the republic and the constitution, you vote communist. And not many voted communist. We do know all about the Vote fraud, that's coming out uh, even more clearly all the time. Now, here's that story. Okay, I just found it. The FBI, whoa, back in action. The FBI, Texas Rangers, and U.S. Federal Marshals have raided the Solar Winds headquarters in Austin, Texas. More news is said to be on the way. This is Gateway Pundit. Very, very good uh, site. More news said to be coming on the CEO and the executive vice president. Let me go back and tell you what Solar Winds is all about. Dominion Voting Systems uses a firm, Solar Winds, that enabled the U.S. Treasury to be hacked. A company that provides voting systems in 28 states uses an Internet technology firm that was hacked. Dominion Voting Systems uses SolarWinds software, according to a Dominion web page. SolarWinds does not list Dominion on its partial customer listing, but says its products and services are used by more than 300,000 customers around the world including all five branches of the U.S. military, oh boy, and more than 425 of the U.S. Fortune 500 companies. Now, before I dive into the raid in Texas, let me welcome Donald Jeffries back tonight. Uh, It's just, it's happening so fast, Donald, it's very hard to hang on. Welcome. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, it it certainly is. I mean, we... uh since last we spoke last week, we had, of course, the uh, Supreme Court uh, uh, refusal to even look at the uh, the Texas lawsuit, which I, I I wasn't that surprised by, but I but I, I did find it kind of amusing, you know, that uh, Donald Trump's three uh, ballyhooed Supreme Court justice choices, all of whom are, are, are ridiculous in my opinion. But I, you know, when, whenever I would uh, argue with people online about uh, you know, Trump's accomplished so much, and I would say, look, all he does is tweet. He hasn't done anything. Oh, look at this! Look at these justices he's appointed. So, well, there you go. None of your justices <laughs> uh, even even right. uh, voted to hear the case, and uh, I don't think that bodes well. Not that I think there's any at this point. I think I mean, you know, the electors voted today. I mean, I I don't know what's going on, and and I I, I don't think all... it matters. I don't think it matters. Yeah. Because of yeah, well, the executive there's... order. I don't think it makes it a damn bit of difference. But how many times yeah. the electors vote? They're all well, going to be thrown out. Well, we'll have to see uh, what happens because certainly in the, that's what the, uh, the, the people that are clinging to hope about, uh, with Trump are supporting. But I think we're looking at different realities because the, uh, 
the establishment is not, I mean, it's almost like it's a looking glass world here. Because, you know, we're seeing things one mm. way and thinking, okay, mm-hmm. this, but the establishment will not acknowledge that reality. And, uh, they, so I, I, you know, there's no, no, he won, just like there's no fraud, there's no this, there. They're looking at it, uh, because as I said before, you know, this, this, this is much, I have no dog in the sun. You know, I'm a Trump agnostic. We're the smallest minority group in the country. You know, everybody hates him, loves him. Except, a Trump you know, agnostic. Now that's an Trump interesting ag- phrase. Very well, my, good. My, 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 my right. friend, John Barber, I got to credit him. He's the one that came up with it. And, uh, but it's, it's very appropriate because is I, is John know, I, describing I, himself as a, a Trump agnostic? Uh, he did for a long time. I don't think he's a Trump agnostic anymore. But, no, he but hates he, him. He, yeah, yeah, well, he it, for a while, and because uh, he and I used to talk, and uh, that was his line. And I said, "Wow, that's perfect. It's great. What a great because that that fits me. I mean, I, I yeah, I still see hope in what he represents symbolically, but I don't buy into the eight thousand degree chest. And I think he's see, you mentioned uh, no, William no, Barr. No, 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 no. Yeah, you know, and you mentioned Barr. I mean, that's just the. Uh, just, to, I mean, I saw people in the conspiracy forums were ecstatic over Barr leaving. I mean, you know, the, it, it's time's almost up here. I mean, and, and the guy he appointed as a acting attorney general or something, Rosen, I think was associated with Rosenstein. I'm not positive, but I, I don't see that there's any time to, to finally go after these. Uh, Wait a minute. Prosecut- I don't see. I don't know this. I don't know if there's a, a, a connection with Rosenstein. I don't. Is That would be a tragedy. Well, I don't. I don't. That's on the what surface. some people. Were, I'd never heard of the yeah. guy, but that's what people were saying online. So who knows? You know, people. Right. I mean, the we'll conspiracy. Give, it, give it a couple hours. We'll figure it out. Um, we'll we'll get right. a grip on it. I honestly right. think at this point you you make you make sense, and uh, I'm I'm almost feeling like there are people around Trump, and I include the 80 million or so who voted for him, who are literally going to pick him up and carry him on their shoulders to victory. I just don't have this feeling that Donald Trump is a, a Mount Vesuvius of power and and the kind of patriotic rhetoric that we need to hear now. We're not hearing it. But whatever. All right, just so the results get, the, get there, the horse crosses the finish line, and we win, and the Republic is saved, at least for four years or thereabout. Look at the Supreme Court we have now, though. My God. It's any, any incredible. All right, let me go into this real quick. All right, a headline. Give credit. Gateway Pundit. Breaking news. FBI, Texas Rangers, and the U.S. Marshals, Federal Marshals, raid Solar Winds headquarters in Austin, Texas. More news coming up on the CEO and Executive Vice President. They don't have a lot here, but they've got some. Last night, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, that's CISA, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, issued a rare emergency directive, 21-01, in response to a known compromise involving Solar Winds Orion products. This was only the fifth emergency directive issued by CISA under the authorities granted by Congress in the Cybersecurity Act of 2015. CISA reported a breach of the Solar Winds Orion products. This emergency directive called on all federal civilian agencies to review their networks for indicators of compromise and disconnect or power down solar winds Orion products immediately. All right, you with me, everybody? Okay. So, guess who uses solar winds? Dominion Voting Systems, that Chinese communist owned company which sought to rape the Republic of the United States of America. Dominion Voting Systems uses solar winds. It's right there on their website. You can find it. This afternoon, a guest on Hannity told the popular conservative hosts that U.S. Marshals and Rangers were raiding the Solar Winds HQ right at that moment. Uh, Hannity's guest said the agency that is supposed to oversee this type of intrusion, this type of Trojan malware virus that affects the nation or even the world in this case, and to find them. Well, his agency was asleep. 
They didn't find that they were out in the wilds since March. I do have a bit of breaking news for you here, though, Sean. I'm here in Texas. I have a good friend who's a ranger who passed to me that the FBI and Texas Rangers and the U.S. Marshals and all together we're at the solar winds headquarters in austin texas and they are currently looking very seriously at the systems they're in there is other news that will be coming out about this and that's the uh that's the piece direct verbatim from the hannity show today i don't have the name of that uh that guest all right here's another one from sandra schultz humongous cyber attack on solar winds an IT and security company based in Austin, Texas. SolarWinds comprehensive products and services are used by more than 300,000 customers worldwide, including the military, U.S., Fortune 500 companies, government agencies, and education institutions. SolarWinds has just been made aware our systems experienced a highly sophisticated manual supply, supply chain attack on SolarWinds Orion platform software builds for versions, blah, 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 and it gives the, the numbers of the versions. All right, this is ongoing. News is, uh, is just now coming out about this, so you're, you're hearing it uh, for the first time in many cases right now. Uh, I really wish Barr had been thrown out of the White House unceremoniously and not allowed to, uh, to resign. Uh, the guy is a piece of crap. He is a, a, a tr- traitor to this country in every, in every way. And should not have been allowed to resign. That's just me talking. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, well, I mean, I think again, I think he, you know, the, the appointment of Barr was one of the one of many indications that uh, that Trump uh, is either uh, just the most unknowledgeable uh, po- political figure ever, which I, you know, the, the, with the way you know Barr was connected to the Bush crime family for for decades. He worked. For, he was a Bush guy, and uh, obviously he was the was the Attorney General under George H. W. Bush. So. For uh, uh, Donald Trump not to know that history and remember how he memorably uh, did a great job of, you know, blasting Jeb Bush and ruining his campaign. And he was the first guy he destroyed in the primary. So he hates the Bushes. Right. So what is he doing nominating one of their lapdogs? And, and, and of course, his cult says uh, he didn't know. What do you mean he didn't know? I mean, Trump. Trump is, you know, if anything, whatever this personality is, how sincere it is or how much of an actor as I think he is. The persona is, wow, you know, you, you do, you know, if, if you, I, I remember everything, you know, I'm, I'm going to go after you. Any slight is going to, you know, to me. How does he not possibly know that this guy was connected to the Bushes? It's impossible for me to believe that. Again, I think this is just right. what I said. I wrote about it when I, I wrote an article a couple years ago called the, the Trumpenstein project. And I, I think that, uh, this, this is all was created from the beginning that he was selected all the way from the, uh, predictive programming. Remember the Simpsons years before, Trump yes, I do. to run for president. Yeah, yeah I mean, he, they had him going down the escalator, the exact same thing. I mean, I, you know, that's when you what really a start going down the rabbit hole. What yeah, a I mean, coincidence. You know, that's what's when you start, you know, really going to the rabbit hole. But I think, unfortunately, what happened, as I said all the time, is that Donald Trump, because of his failure to do anything he promised to do, other than tweet and brag and threaten and then back off and name another deep state creature while claiming he was going to drain the swamp. Because of that, all that great populist rhetoric that inspired a lot of people, you know, for him the first, you know, to really talk about, hey, we have to do something about immigration. We need to deport illegal immigrants. We need sure. to control the border. We need to yeah. rebuild the infrastructure that hasn't been touched since the Eisenhower days. We need to get out of these senseless wars and bring the troops home. We need to uh, audit the Fed. We need to uh, have a vaccine, uh, oh, a, 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 a vaccine yeah. autism commission with Bobby Kennedy Jr.'s head. He promised all that. He didn't do anything because of that. The next sap that attempts to run on any of those who who runs on that kind of populism is going to be laughed at and ridiculed because it's going to be associated with Donald Trump's failed. uh, I'm afraid you're right. Yeah. 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 Unless unless uh, unless he successfully overturns this this outrageous crime. Of an election. Well, that's a big call. Well, that's I, and yeah, if that's he can a big do that, yeah, a lot of the negativity will will dissipate. So, but well, I do absolutely agree with that, that would. But but again, no. But even even then, if if that happened, uh, mm-hmm. you know, hopefully that would cause a sea change. Because the problem is with, with with no matter what happens here, 
And I said before, you know, this, this is what the, the other side, the people that consider this a huge conspiracy theory. And it is a conspiracy theory in, in, in their eyes that, you know, oh my God, they're sure there was massive voter fraud and everything. And, but it, the difference between that conspiracy theory and anything else we talk about on shows like this or anything I write about in my books is that 80 million people at least that voted for Trump or whatever believe it. Believe it wholeheartedly. And you can't, you know, it's not easy. You can't dismiss that like 9-11 or uh, something like that or, or any, you, you, you can't, or, uh, you know, Sandy Hook or Pizzagate or anything like that. You can't demonize it and, and pigeonhole like it because it's half the country that, that, but, you know, that realizes, wait a minute. And not only that, but it's, it's, it's associated not with some kind of esoteric thing like child sex trafficking or a political corruption. It's associated with the most basic right we're supposed to have to vote, the democratic process. So if half the people think that that has been corrupted, it doesn't even matter if it's true. I mean, we, I, you know, I, I think it's true, but I think it's been true for a long time because we have, we have a corrupt process. But if half the country thinks it, then there's, they're, why would they bother to vote in it ever again? If they, especially if, if what I think is going to happen, I mean, I, I'm not as optimistic as you, but I think it, the, the way it's going, because nothing was changed in Georgia. Nothing was changed about the process. I think what you're seeing with Stacey Abrams and others saying, come move to Georgia and vote. You know, it doesn't matter. All those residency requirements we're supposed to have, those laws apparently don't mean anything. Just move here and vote. Then you can leave if you want. I think you're going to see both those senators lose and the Democrats are going to take control of uh, the Senate as well. But because the process hasn't changed and unless we examine the process, you know, then it's, you know, you're, you're left with, the, you know, you hear all the secession talk. Now, I don't, you know, we they tried that before and I've written a lot about that, you know, the secession. And uh, it didn't go so well the last time. And I don't know how you do it I, because every I, state I think. If you, if you read, go read that, all of you go read that executive order again. It is crystal clear in its intent and all Donald has to do. And he's got General Mike Flynn. He's got some power in there. Believe it. Lieutenant General Three Star also, Thomas McInerney. He's got, he's got, he's got the incredible. And I made a Time Magazine cover. All right, Sidney Powell, a person of the year. I think it's I think it's very credible, and it certainly beats the hell out of the other cover. Uh, okay, if Donald pulls the trigger, and actually, and if they arrest people in Austin, and fo- let's follow, let's follow. It doesn't matter about the electoral college if this is proven a fraud, and it can be proven a fraud very easily by the Chinese ownership of Dominion voting machines. It's simple. And the counting of the votes in Frankfurt and in Spain, I've forgotten the city. Uh, look, this is foreign interference if there ever was any. Election, null and void. It's over. Electoral College, go home, sharpen your pencils, and maybe try again. It isn't going to happen. If it does happen, we're dead. And I don't think we're ready to die yet in this country. 80 million Americans will not allow it. And if they have to go to the White House and surround it and cheer and cheer and cheer, along with U.S. Marines and Special Forces, the Trump government, they will. And they need to. This is the greatest country that the world has ever known, in certainly modern times at least. And it is worth fighting and it is worth dying for. And I'm not speaking over the top. Our forefathers well, fought and made this country happen. We owe them. Well, our, our forefathers would certainly be, it must be weeping <laughs> at, 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 what, uh, at what we've made, uh, a mockery of a, a great system. But you know, it doesn't matter how great a system is. If you have the wrong people, uh, you know, Bob Dylan's great song, you know, the pump don't work because the vandals took the handles, you know, subterranean homesick blues. And, you know, that's, that's yeah, exactly yeah. it. It doesn't matter how good the pump is. You know, so who's handling it? And that's the problem is no matter how great the system is, the system of checks and balances, all that is supposed to work, but it was corrupted long ago and the people in it are so bad. And that's why I say I don't, I don't know who Trump turns to because I don't think the military is necessarily going to be, uh, loyal to Trump. I think I certainly, yes, the brass they will. doesn't like him. No, no, they well, will. They, he's got the Marines. And if you don't think the Marines are pro Trump, you better think again, folks. 
Uh, he's got all the special forces highly trained from all branches of the military answering to acting DOD chief Chris Miller. And if you don't think that's enough to go in with uh, local law enforcement and start arresting people, you should think again. It is. It's plenty. And if the U.S. Army, for example, sought to side with the communists and fight, this country would be embroiled in the most brutal civil war since 1861. Guaranteed. All right. Hang on. Be right back. I just, I mean, I look at this and I laugh. It just doesn't stop. These are enormous things. We really are at war already. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of blood in the streets, although four Trump supporters were stabbed in Washington, D.C. That may have started it. We are seeing the beginnings of what can be, could be, an absolutely brutal struggle for the soul of this country. And I am only, only thinking about how it must look up from abroad. What are these people thinking? I mean, I know what I think, but what does it look like from, from Europe? Seriously, from Russia. I could give a crap about what the Chinese think. I know what they think. They want to get in here and steal more of our R&D, our highest technology, our, our best possible patented items. They are the evil on the planet. Make no mistake of it. It's not Russia. It's China. China. They are preparing to absolutely deny us a future. They are preparing to destroy this country militarily through theft, through blackmail, through bribery. And if you don't think that they own the Biden crime family and the Clinton crime family, you're not thinking. Not at all. the, the only, I mean, to whatever degree China, the Chinese influence in the United States, again, is all, is all based on, uh, what, you know, a lot of us have been talking about for decades. You know, when we out, when we gutted our industries and we, uh, outsourced everything and we allowed all our products, I mean, first in Japan, then later in China. I mean, going back to when I was a little kid, I mean, every transistor radio was made in Japan. That kind of thing. We, we, as we outsourced everything. We gutted all of factories and industries. Right. What made America great in the post-war era and gave a standard of living to, made the middle class. Because you had all those people out there that still exist that were largely uneducated in the 1940s and the 1950s. Well, they're, they're even more uneducated now. Uh, with our school systems the way they are, that we desperately need places like that where people can go and be trained and work on an assembly line and do uh, credible work and make a decent uh, living so they can raise families and, and be upstanding members of the community. You don't have that anymore. That's gone because of, because of uh, greed at the top, because of these CEOs these who have no uh, ties to America, who are globalists. The globalists, again, that Trump ranted against. Again, another great thing he was saying when he was talking about globalists and let's be a nationalist. They don't, they don't want nationalists. That's why he was demonized. Because they don't, which is, you know, very ironic because we still chant USA, USA, and we wave the flag, and, you know, uh, you see all this fake patriotism everywhere, but we really don't have any nationalist patriotism because once someone tries to invoke that and again even though it's not that's certainly not warlike because we're at war all the time the same people that rant against nationalism want to be involved in all these countries they want to bomb they want to occupy but they don't want you looking out for your own national interest and uh, because that's certainly in line not certainly not looking out for your national interest to allow your factories to be sent offshore but you know when you there, there are easy ways to fix that. And I thought, you know, maybe Trump would do something like that. You know, you, you tax all offshore profits 100%. So you have to come back. Or, you know, if you, if you, if you can't do something like that, give them tax incentives or something to, to get them to, to come back. Because that's why, you know, China filled the need. And uh, they're just simply the biggest uh, international force that was able to do that. But, Jeff, if, we, if there was a military that could possibly uh, – Come and take over America. You talk about being ripe for the picking. We are weak. We're divided like the like never before. I mean, hell, depending on if it was China or whoever, if, if somebody did try to invade us, half of America would probably fight on their side. You know, so see, we are, we are completely weak. Uh, so fortunately, I think uh, even China, whoever, would still be frightened of the arsenal we've built up. Uh, right. But. 
you know, we, well, that's the only that's, thing holding them off. It's certainly not yep. the uh, the home defense force. That's for sure. Yep. No, I agree. Yep. I, I'm I'm just I'm really sad to have to confront reality that communism, which took root here uh, in World War II and even in the late 30s, has never gone away, and it has grown and grown and grown. See, Ad- Adolf Hitler knew about communism. That's why he drove it out. He knew it was unstoppable, and it's here, and it ruined our education system. Charlotte Iserbeet's book, The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America, is a communist uh, essay, if you will, full of documentation. The communists, the liberals, the socialists, the progressives, the Marxists, the Leninists, these are the Bolshevik Zionist communist enemies of America. And they have to be recognized for what they are first and foremost, or we don't have a prayer. Yeah, we can't I, keep I playing games. Well, again, I think like the Chinese coming in and with trade deals and, and, and what sourcing filled a void. And I think all those forces on the left, whatever we want to call them, communists, Marxists, whatever, they filled a, they filled a void because, again, we're, we don't – this crony capitalist system we have is not free enterprise. It's monopolistic, especially since the 80s when, when right. Reagan, right. uh, you know, started the trickle down economics. At that point, and, and Tucker Carlson has mentioned this, we have to show and all, our system has to look better than that. Because if, if communism, whatever you want to call it, if the left is offering, uh, hey, we'll pay your student loans. If they're offering, uh, a, a, you know, to a, a minimum wage of $15 or something, everybody that's working for eight, nine dollars an hour with no raises, no hope, no prospect of upward mobility, why wouldn't they go for that? But the other side is offering them nothing. If you work hard, no. If you work hard in the vast majority of jobs, you'll go nowhere because that's the that's way crony capitalism works. So they have to offer an alternative. And because those wrongs still exist, the other side, you know, even AOC, all these people, they come out with some good rhetoric at times because they're, they're noticing all the things that are wrong. And, uh, but that's why it's so easy, you know, communism, you know, if you read a lot of Marxist, a, a lot of his stuff sounds great. You know, workers of the world unite. You have nothing to lose but your chains. He he looked at a, at a, at a problem that existed there. And, of course, they devised a system out of that that uh, was, you know, like everything else, isn't what is promised. You know, it's not going to be that you're going to you're going to get the fruit of your labor. I mean, because it is I mean, I, I know as a writer and in my showbiz book that's coming out next year, all the entertainers I talk to. Capitalism does exploit, especially creative people. It exploits the hell out of them. So that's why you have so many people who are in rock bands and, and, and that sold millions of records and uh, so many people that were in TV shows that are still being rerun that got nothing out of that. But the producers who hired them and weren't the talent, they made millions. And that's that's exactly what Marx was talking about way back then. So it sounded good. The problem is wherever it's been implemented, it, nothing like that happens. You have huge state control, and we see obviously people. You know, you you end up with a uh, a, a nobility at the top, which is what they're not supposed to want. And that's why you know if you look at communist rhetoric and why they hated my hero Huey Long, the communists hated Huey Long, and so did the uh, uh, the socialist. Even though certainly it looked like what he was selling was socialism, Marxism, but it wasn't. And they they understood that populism was different. And that's why a lot of what I say sometimes it gets mistaken for socialism because I'm a populist. And, I, and you, we recognize it, that great mass of wealth at the top. And that's what capitalism can't answer because they, they try to pretend it doesn't exist or they, they spout out some nonsense that. Ah, oh, they try you know, to sweep they, it under the rug. It's, it's yeah, such they, garbage. Yeah. Or they worked hard. No, no, they didn't. And I, my book, Survival of the Richest, points <laughs> out, you know, how hard most of these people, but first of all, most of yeah. them inherent. They, the, the Donald Trumps of the world, as, as our friend Gerald Saloni likes to say, these people were born on third base and they think they hit a home run. And that's the way most of the 1% is. You know, I mean, Donald sure. Trump has bragged about how he got a million dollar loan from his father. It's like, well, I, I would have liked to have gotten a million dollar loan from my father. I probably could have done something. I think I could have made something myself with a million dollars fronted to me. But they don't realize that, you know, this, this is, this, this, you have advantages. And, um, there's a lot of luck plays in the part of it. But, you know, going back when America was working the best was, you know, in the post-war boom, 
we had a middle class because at that time you had thriving unions and you had a again you had a top tax rate under Eisenhower of ninety percent. So even though those one percenters were still they still had their loopholes. But that's where the money was coming from, and that's how you built the national highway system. That's how you had those things. And the problem is the right has no answer for that. So you say, okay, well, you know, that's what needs to be done now. And I'm not saying going back to a 90% tax rate, but if Huey Long was alive today, Huey Long was looking at – that's why he said share the wealth. He didn't say share the income because he knew where the wealth was. He knew even then you had – Things like the Carnegie Foundation for International Peace, the Ford Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, the early foundations, he knew there was untold amounts of wealth there. He was one of the first critics of the Federal Reserve. He knew there was wealth there that needed to be audited. Now, with all the foundations you have, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, there's so much wealth there. And that's why Huey Long's tax proposal was he he was in an exempt the first million dollars of income, Jeff, from tax. In the 1930s, that's $12 million Mm -hmm. today, so... Yeah. You know, who would oppose that other than the absolute top? He was going, and that's what we need to do. And communism doesn't do communism. That's why you see the people on the left or whatever you want to call these people. They all, they're talking, they don't talking about the people at the top. They're not calling Bill Gates a eugenicist and a racist or whatever, which you could easily do. They're calling you and me that. You're the whites. You, your white privilege, not the white privilege of the Bill Gates or the mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, or Warren that. Buffett. The hey, CBS. no, they don't, you know, they don't talk about those guys. Yeah. There are pigs, uh, rich pigs on both sides of the aisle playing the game as if they were Democrat or Republican. It doesn't matter. The greed, arrogance, e- condescension, elite perspectives are not the province of one side or the other. They're they're equal. Uh, the left tends to be a little bit more brutal with its enforcement of its own wealth and power, as, oh, as we can simply see by history at its uh, easiest observable stance, or, or the other side. A little more conservative, but still, greed and wealth all over the place. doesn't matter, the label. doesn't matter. Right. And that's why you, you see that the woke left, that's why, you know, I, I, you know, I should be on the left, but I mean, I, I can't stand the woke left because they don't talk about any of these things. They, the woke left hates Huey Long. They, they don't even, they don't like the candidates anymore. They don't even anymore. know who he is. No, they don't even know who he is, but they, they, they don't care about disparity of wealth unless you can prove it's racist. Their entire world is built around racism and white supremacy and white privilege because those are divisive terms. And they're used to turn the suckers against each other, the 80% of all colors that are getting screwed over and that are working and living paycheck to paycheck that don't have $500 in savings in the bank. And now things are even much even worse because we don't even know how many millions more of them have been thrown out of work because of this absurd lockdown. And uh, we'll never be able to, to catch up again how many hundreds of small businesses with, that were in that group have gone out. But they, they don't care about any of that. Instead, they, they want to talk about terms and the ridiculous Green New Deal and talk about climate change when they don't talk about it. Do, do you hear AOC or anybody, Al Gore, any of them? Did they ever mention the BP oil spill and the Fukushima disaster? <laughs> what? what? Talk about it Fuka for what? <laughs> BP <laughs> what? I mean, yeah. Exactly. I mean, why aren't they talking about that? Instead, they're talking about you and me. Why are you taking hot showers? Why are you driving an SUV? You don't need air conditioning. That's the idea. They want you to, they want, that's where China comes in. They love the China model. They want us to have the new normal, lower your standard of living. Go live in that bunk like the Chinese do and we'll pay you $8 a day or whatever that they're paying the Chinese. That's what they want. And that's why so many of them are uh, betrothed to China uh, because they love the model because the Chinese model oh, yeah. can get them to take even more wealth and give the masses even less as they're doing in China. But, uh, you know, but, but unfortunately one part of the model, at least China's clean and they have good infrastructure. But so we, we have China? To, we're, we're, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> China has the dirtiest air on the planet. Well, yeah, they do. Where, have, I'm, you're right. I'm, I don't mean wearing the N95 mask is it mandatory in most of China's big cities. So I don't find China is, clean. Well, yeah, I guess I shouldn't have used that word. But but as far as their infrastructure, how about well organized? Yes, well organized, perfectly. They they remind you a little bit of uh, 
the trains run on time. You know, the old thing they used to say about Mussolini, yeah. because that, yeah. that's what we're missing here is that the corruption really hasn't changed. I mean, it's gotten more overt, but in the past 60, 70 years ago, you had competence. The corrupt right. people were competent, and now they're, they're not only corrupt, but you look in the big cities and – Wow. I mean, the Lori Lightfoots of the world and people like that. I mean, nobody can possibly think they're competent and uh, and they're corrupt, too. So it's like, wow, you know, at least if I'm going to have to deal with corruption, can we at least be competent? So my power is yeah. not going to go off yeah, yeah. strong, <laughs> that kind of thing. But but we are so we, we are the worst of both worlds. But, you know, you can't. We're so – and so when I hear more and more secession talk and I just having written so much about the first civil war – I just, I'm just looking how, I don't know how this will happen because there, there are people in every state on both sides. So I don't know how you would, you would have to like, what would you do? Clear out a couple states and just say, okay, everybody that's, you know, red can go here, everybody blue can, I mean, I, if I don't want, know how that if, would... if you want to, if you want to resolve this, this fracture in the country, you're going to have to literally form sections. They're going to have yep. to be red sections and blue sections, unless you yep. want to go through agony for another 50 years. No. Right. To quickly resolve this, we need to do two things. We have to split the country into sections. We have to give tax advantages, whatever they cost, to bring all American industry home from overseas yes. production. Simple. Yep. We have to do it. And if it costs us money, fine. Americans will pay more for American-produced goods. That's been proven yeah. over and over. We yeah. don't want yeah. stuff made in third-world and second-world countries. Most of China is a second-world country. Right. And what and what do we do for, 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 again, the small minority people like me who really probably wouldn't be happy in a red or blue area. You know, I mean, we're, can we have like a purple? I mean, I, I don't even know how that works. Can we have an independent place? Because I, I, you know, I don't know that I would be happy in either place. And uh, as far as if, if the, the entire rules, because I don't know what, you know, I, I know I, I, you know, what a, a blue state would look like, and I certainly necessarily I wouldn't want the woke, uh, you know, not at. Uh, Supported the right. Bill of Rights right. and things like that, but I don't know what a red state necessarily would look like. It might mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, a flat tax or you know, people, uh, you know, the. Um, hey, the, I'm, the, I've the, always the, honestly, uh, and there are people oppose this violently, virulently. I think a value-added tax is the only way to do income tax in this country. Yeah, take it off the burden of the wage earners and make it equal according to what you buy. That's what you slap a ten percent tax on it. People will yeah, survive. Yeah. They'll just buy more prudently. Yeah. They'll they'll shop more intelligently. It'll work. Yeah. The income yeah. tax has got to go. Yeah, they had, they had to come up with something, but uh, I, I it would, that would be interesting. I just don't know again the logistics of it, and uh, but I, I'm afraid, unfortunately, that it's. Uh, Especially if if what you're saying is right, and and somehow Trump, in, in, with this executive order or whatever he that he has at his disposal, can possibly overturn this thing, then I think you're that probably will ignite it because the entire establishment, everybody other than the military or whatever he could possibly use, is utterly opposed to this and will be violently opposed to this. I think, and I think you'll you you would see so many people in the streets. Now, I, I think if nothing happens. And, uh, you know, Biden is inaugurated. I, I don't I think Trump immediately just becomes not going to uh, happen. Think, Can't happen. Yeah. Not going to happen. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Well, it's it's interesting. It will be interesting to see because I, I suspect that, you know, Trump would be content to have uh, nonstop rallies, uh, you know, outside of the office and just kind of be calling Biden names and running for 2024 again. You know. And I think his 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 fans would probably no more games. That would be a game. It oh, I'm be. just going it to would. ignore. I'm just going to ignore this travesty, this treasonous right, travesty, right. and allow right. it we'll to stand. And I'll, I'll run again in four years. Right. Bullshit. Right. No. You, know, you would think because the first thing somebody would say was, if there aren't any reforms to what happened this time, you're not going to no, win the next forget time. Forget it. No, this is it. <laughs> this is, this is yeah. only one yeah. outcome uh, that that will allow the republic to persevere. Only one, and that's for Trump to pull in special forces, all available hands in the military, all the patriots 
who want to stand up with the military and help them. We've got to do it. We have to throw out communism. We have to stop treason. We have to dress down and take into custody traitors. We can't allow them to continue to float along. Well, I'd certainly, I certainly would want to, I, I, I want to drain the swamp more than anybody, but when, when would, when do you think this would, when would we see this? Like, at what point would Trump do, be doing this? He's got time, uh, I think he has until January 10th, January oh. 15th, at the outside. Hmm. He's got to move, this has to move, and, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't pay any attention to the Electoral College, it's bogus. So, it's Ironically, illegal would, would you, on its face. Wouldn't it be funny though? Because the, the left wants to get rid of the electoral college if they start <laughs> if they start standing. What about the electoral college? They voted because <laughs> no. isn't that their whole point? They no. want to scrap the electoral college. So that would that would be interesting to see right. the electoral college. Well, the state your- the state legislatures, uh, the, the blue state governors, criminals, dictators, tin pot dictators, and I'm talking about Gruesome Newsom and Kemp uh, and uh, and w- Witless w- Whitmer. Uh, come on, these these people are enemies of America. Period, and you can go on from there. That that pig Chris Christie uh, turning on, on on all of us like he did yesterday. It just goes on. Bar. This guy was running yeah. drugs at Mina, according to people yeah, who were yeah. there under a false name back in the Clinton heyday. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. come on. Yeah, these are these are all. I mean, you know, the the Chris Christies and, and Bill Bars of the world. These are the Mitt Romneys. I mean, this this is why I I never. At least Trump didn't run as a Republican, and he has not really gotten much Republican support. Other than at this point, there there are a pretty a surprising number of them that are still kind of you know standing behind him and saying, "Yeah, fight." I'm surprised there are as many that are still there. I'm surprised they haven't all, you know, demanded that he that he uh concede like the uh, the Mitt Romney's did right away. Right. But uh the Republicans have been have never been known for their backbone. Like I said, I called them the stupid party, called the Democrats yeah. the evil party, yeah, yeah. the Republicans the yeah. stupid party. Yeah. And that's yeah. typically yeah. what they do is capitulate, apologize and, and perpetually apologize. And please don't call me racist, no matter what it is. Uh, and that's that's basically their has has been their uh, it, their overriding issue. Other than again, tax cuts for the wealthy. That's pretty much what they do. Just corporate tax cuts, tax cuts for the wealthy. That's what they run on, nonstop. Sure. And and sure. and uh, and you know, don't call us racist, but everything else will go along with you. Do whatever <laughs> you want. Just give us those tax cuts. You know? Right. Yeah, I know. And I don't. I don't I don't know how you broaden your base with that. You know, unless unless you're wealthy or you have a big corporation, I, I don't know how that's. So and we have to is. we have to completely uh, somehow make voting what it used to be uh, a quasi honorable profession right. for patriots. Bring back civics, a profession civics, of sorts. Yeah, they used to teach yes. civics in high school. You know, it stopped exactly before I was right. in high school. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's again, and you should, yeah, you should know what, um, and and they should teach the fact that it's, you know, that it's uh, as in Europe. Europe doesn't allow mail-in balloting ballots. They don't allow. They require strict photo ID. I was arguing with somebody yesterday on uh, on social media that was talking about uh, all this voter suppression. I said, okay, I keep hearing about voter suppression by the Republicans. I, you know, I, but I don't know what the details are. And of course, he couldn't provide any details. Polls were closed. Polls were moved. Okay, well, that, no, that's no, bad. No, no, but, no. but, 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 but how yeah. how far were they moved? And did people still have an opportunity to vote on, on a local place? I mean, if that's not if that's not the case, then yeah, that is suppression. But I don't know that's true. And of course, they can never provide. And I said it comes down to the right. photo ID thing. And I'm sorry if you're if you're thinking that it's racist. First of all, how how uh, how condescending is that to black people that black people don't have photo ids and what what about the whites that okay the the, min, the minimum the, the minority of whites or minority, right. minority people of all races that don't drive right, don't right, have right. licenses yeah what do white people do how do they get a photo id and blacks can't it's very it's very condescending <laughs> it's parent pandering and it's just it's <clears throat> stupid it's you know you should look it's a photo id is to prevent voter fraud period that's it that's nothing to do with race but and that's the woke mentality. That's why I'm, you know, disassociated from today's left because they just, you know, that's all they want to talk about. They literally don't care. They don't care about war and peace anymore unless you can somehow convince them that, you know, there's too many black people, too many black American soldiers who could get killed. Okay, well, then maybe they'll be against it then. Thanks for being here. Uh, take care. 
And uh, keep observing. Watch and learn.